The complicated knots coming to you with technical terms. Hello everyone, it's Thursday and this week we're feeling just a little bit loved up here over on Complicated Knots. So Valentine's Day is coming up really quickly and I just thought I'd show you this week how to make a little love sloth. Okay, so we're going to do this sloth in a little bit of an unconventional order this time. We're going to start with the little heart that he's holding. We're then going to make his little jelly bean of a body. We then make his little face mask as a separate piece. We make that kind of heart shaped as well, just to carry on with the theme. We'll then be making his little arms and legs. Right, so they are the pieces we are going to need. So now let's get into tools and materials. So I've decided that the sloth I'm going to make today, I'm going to make him stripy. But uh, you can see here he turns out just as beautifully in one colour. So I'm going to be using a combination of pale blue and pale purple. This is 100% acrylic, 8 ply. One, I believe, is a Four Seasons Marvel, and I think the other one's a Carnival, but they are both just from my stash. They've lost their labels years ago. They're what I'm going to use for the body of my sloth. Uh, and I'm also going to use Four Seasons Marvel for his little face. So you see we need like a little light cream or a paler colour. A paler version of your main colour, if you're using a more saturated tone, would work for that as well. Uh, you'll also need a little bit of pink or red for his cheeks and his little heart. And you'll also need a small amount of black just for his nose and mouth. Now for this pattern, you're also going to need a pair of 15 millimeter safety eyes. Um, or you could just stitch on eyes as well. So you see how I've stitched on like sort of the mouth and the cheeks. You could easily just embroider on a face as well. But for me, I know where my strengths lie and I'm going to stick with clip on eyes for today. You are going to need your 3.5 millimeter hook. You're going to need your scissors. You're going to need some pins and needles. You're going to need some stuffing. And if you want to make a fuzzy, fuzzy little sloth like me, you're going to need your wire slicker brush. Now, in case you've not seen me talk about this before, this was a, I don't know, it was six or $7 from my supermarket. It's a pet grooming brush. And what you're looking for is something with sharp metal bristles. And basically what we do is we brush the finished product in it and it gives it sort of this little wispy fuzz type texture. So I'm going to be doing that today, though of course that is a completely optional step, but that's it. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start with the heart. So the heart is worked from this tip upwards to this point here. And then we work around half the available loops to create the first curve. Then we work around the remaining loops to create the second curve. So that is what we're going to do now. Right, so what you want to do is start with a magic ring of six and we're going to work six rows. And then I'll come back and show you how to do the two nubby bits on top of the heart. So there we go, that's the bottom half of our little heart. And now we are going to make the two nubs as promised. So, <laughs> all right, so we've worked up to 18 stitches around. So to create the two little nubs on top, what we're gonna do is count backwards from our hook and you're going to count back nine spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've inserted my hook through that ninth stitch and I'm gonna work my next single crochet in that one there. So that is the first stitch of that row and we're going to do eight more stitches around to make nine in total. So there we go, just like that. And now we are just going to sort of decrease this opening down until, until we've finished off. So because I don't want the heart to be too pointy, I've actually finished off with six stitches still left in the round instead of continuing to decrease. And I'm just going to insert my hook through each of those stitches and weave through the remaining tail. And just like a little drawstring bag, we'll be pulling that little opening shut. And of course, tuck your little tail inside now. So there we are, that's sort of the first half of your heart done. I am just gonna stop and we're gonna put a little bit of stuffing inside now. So about that much, you can put a little bit more in if you want, but about that much I think is a good amount. And what you wanna do is focus that stuffing in the, in the nubby bit. Okay, so this is just such a tiny detail uh, and it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but because I want all of my stitches to have the right side facing outwards, I'm actually going to turn this and I'm gonna reattach with the, so the opening is on the side with my hook and I'm gonna reattach in that last available stitch in the row. So if you can see that, it's the last stitch before the sort of opening in the nub. And I'm gonna join with a standing single crochet, just like that. But you can, of course, uh, sort of slip stitch and chain one and then, and then single crochet, and that works just as fine. I just, I, I really like the standing single crochet. So that's our first stitch in there. We're then going to see this one available stitch after that first little nub. 
We're going to stitch it in, in there next, like so, and tuck that tail in. So we've done our first two stitches and now we're going to do seven more just to complete our round of nine. Like so. We're going to keep working around this little ring until we've closed off exactly the same as the other side. If you want, you can stop and stuff it a little bit more now and then we'll have our finished little heart. There is your little love heart. It came out so nicely. <laughs> okay, so that is your love heart done. So that is part one complete. And we'll pop that to one side. And I'm going to pop the pink to one side for now as well, just because it's taken up a little bit of room here. Okay, so this does mean that we are moving on to part two, which is this little jelly bean of a body. There's nothing really special about how you work this particular piece up. I'm going to pop the instructions on the screen and then as a little bit of a treat, I'm going to try a hyperlapse this time just because I think it'll be cool with the two colors as opposed to like that, that, that sort of photo method that I normally use. So we're going to try that this time and you can let me know in the comments if you, which one you prefer. So I'm going to, I'm going to swap to hyperlapse now. All right, so you can see that we've worked down on our opening to 18 stitches, but I haven't finished off yet. I've still got both strands attached or it'll, it'll just be a single strand if you're just doing one color. Really like how those little stripes have turned out actually. <laughs> so what we need to do now is put this aside and make part three, the little face. This is because I'm using plastic safety eyes. I need to clip them on through both the face and into the body, which means that I need to actually attach them before we finish off the main body piece. So yeah, we're just gonna whip up the little face now. Pop that to one side. Oh, those colors look so pretty together, don't you think? Oh, I just, I gotta get over this pastel thing. Hopefully it'll all be out of my system soon. Right, so the sloth face is worked as a flat piece where we start at the base and we're gonna work backwards and forwards uh, until we reach sort of this level on it. And at that point, what we do is we actually work backwards and forwards to work up one eyebrow. We stitch around the outer edge and then we work backwards and forwards to work up the second eyebrow, which gives us this cute little heart-shaped face. To make the face, we are first going to chain 11. So then we're going to turn and starting in the second chain from hook, we're going to put 10 single crochet across. Okay, we're then gonna chain one and turn. And then we're just gonna work two rows to build up that bottom half of the face. And we're gonna sort of chain one and turn at the end of each of them. Okay, so we've built up the bottom half of the face there. I've chained one and turned again. So now we are ready to work up our first eyebrow. So to do that, uh, as I've mentioned, we've turned and I'm just gonna work five single crochet. Then I'm gonna slip stitch twice. Then I'm gonna work five single crochet again. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And we're going to work five single crochet back. Just like that. So the next two stitches would be the two slip stitches. We're not going to stitch into those. Instead, we're going to chain one and turn. I'm going to put a decrease in this first stitch. Then I'm going to put two single crochet. So one and then two. And then in this last stitch, we're going to slip stitch again. It just helps give it that nice rounded shape. And now I'm going to place 17 single crochet working around this outer edge until we reach the other side. And I should just say that the stitch, exact stitch count doesn't really matter for, the, for this particular step as long as you've stitched around the outside and you finish uh, so that your next stitch can be worked back in those loops there. So now we're going to make the second eyebrow and to do that we are going to put five single crochet through those stitches on top. So you'll note that those two slip stitches we did a couple of rows ago are there and we have not stitched into them and we're not going to. So chain one and turn at the end of that row and then we are going to put a decrease, two single crochet and then a slip stitch and finish off. OK, 
Okay, so there is our cute little finished face plate. So what we're going to do first off is position the eyes. So you put one in at each eyebrow. You'll see that we're trying to leave an even space around that sort of circle. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Note that I'm not snapping the backs on yet. So one other thing that we do at this point here, just because it's easier than once it's all attached, is we're going to stitch on the little face. So I'm going to use a little bit of black and I'm just going to put four little stitches over those slip stitches in the middle, first of all, to make the little notes. So using those stitches as guides, I'm literally just going to insert my hook below where those slip stitches start and just stitch straight over the top of them. There we go. So that's the little nose. And then I'm also just going to do this little V, which is just one little stitch down and one little stitch up. And I'm going to just position that in the middle. There we go. I'm just going to finish that off. So now I'm going to use a little bit of the same pink I used for my heart to just stitch on a couple of cute little cheeks as well. I'm just going to stitch those cheeks diagonally on the outside of the eyes. Just like that. So perhaps a darker pink might have worked a little nicer in this circumstance. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So again, still, the clips are not on the back of the piece. So that is what the back of my face looks like all stitched on. And you can see why I choose to embroider as little as possible. Anyway, so that is, that is our adorable little face. And now we're going back to the body. Now, if you squid your body around a little bit, you're going to notice that one side has kind of a little bulge. Now that is meant to be his little belly. So that bit there is kind of his front. Uh, you will have seen me do this so many times. When positioning eyes, I like to stuff the piece, work out where I want the eyes to go, take all the stuffing out, attach the eyes, and then restuff the piece again. Okay. So this is the belly and I'm going to position the face above the belly. But thanks to my stripes, you can see I'm position positioning the tops of those eyebrows are roughly five to six rows down from the top of the head. I'm going to use my heart to make sure that there's definitely room. Might move that up just a little bit to four rows down. Using the heart again, and that's a better fit. So this is where I want my eyes positioned. Now, because I can't quite get them through the weaving properly without having my hands inside, I'm going to pin the face in place carefully making sure that the pins all point on the outside of the piece because I don't like making blood sacrifices to my creations if it can be avoided. It's also why I use a plastic needle. When you're this accident prone, you've got to take safety measures. So that face is like roughly in place. And then I'm going to take all of my stuffing out again. For the record, that's how much stuffing I fit inside my sloth. And now we are just going to get these eyes clipped into place. There we go, all clipped on. I'm going to leave those pins in because we do still need to sew down the face, but first I am going to stuff the head again. Now we have officially finished part three and we're just going to go back to part two and work a couple of rows just to finish closing in this gap. So there we go, we have finished part two. So now what we're going to do is just take our needle and thread and we're going to stitch that little face on. I'm going to start on this side of the nose and I'm just going to stitch all the way around the outer edge until I reach this side of the nose and I'm going to leave the little nose unsecured just so that it sits correctly. But the face will otherwise be very firmly secured. Particularly if you're going to use your wire brush to make yours fluffy, make sure that you stitch it down very, very carefully. So there we go. That is sewn down as firmly as I could manage it. And now I am going to use my brush to make our little sloth fluffy. Uh, now I do have a whole video on this. I will link somewhere on the screen <laughs> um, that does sort of cover how to do this. But in short, basically you take your wire brush and you just start brushing your acrylic and you brush it sort of in all directions. And you see how you start getting this very fine fluffy fuzz. You keep going until it's as fluffy as you want it to be. I'm going to personally avoid brushing over the face. The eyes are pretty resistant to the wire bristles, but you know, there's no, I don't really want him to have a fluffy face, but I am going to sort of brush the rest of him and, and then we'll come back. Okay. So I have fluffed mine up to the point where uh, I'm, I'm happy with him. I like his little wisp on top of his head. <laughs> and it's, it's like I, the stripes have turned out great actually. I'm going to set him to one side and we're going to work on part four. So for part four, we're going to make two little arms and two little legs. 
Now we're going to start with the arms. So how we're going to approach these arms is we're going to start at the tip of the claw and we're going to work two rows in our face color because I'm going to be using that as my claw color as well. Uh, and then we'll be swapping to our body color and working sort of up and around. So we'll be working a series of increases and decreases and we do that because it gives the arm this sort of very gentle S bend, which is what we're looking for in our little sloth. I'm just gonna finish that off. So there is our arm. So there's that sort of very gentle S bend I was talking about. Now I have a gaggle of very opinionated sisters and they insisted that some kind of claw was required. But if you don't want a little claw, just do this whole thing in a body color and it'll look like, well this, it'll look like this, little paws instead. So that's our first arm. And now we just need to put about this much stuffing in. If you, if you feel like it, uh, I should say, I didn't stuff the arms on this one at all, but I'm just gonna put a little stuffing in on this one here. Just like that. And all of that stuffing is going down into the sort of the hand piece. So now we need one more just like it. Ta-da. So, okay, there are our two little arms. And now we need to make two little feet. We're going to approach those in a very similar way. Again, we're going to start at the tip of the claw and we're going to work back towards the base. This end will be open. It's just for the leg. There won't be any of the increases and decreases because we don't want it to have the same S bend. It's just going to be one chunky little nugget. Right, so I've just finished off the back leg there and I have not stuffed this piece at all. We want it to sit re relatively flat and so I would encourage you to not stuff this one. And now we're going to create another one just like it. So because I am doing a fluffy sloth, I am now going to take my wire brush and I'm just going to fuzz up one side of each of these limbs, depending on which way out they'll be facing because you don't need to fuzz the, the inner side because you can't really see it. So there we go, that is all four little limbs all fuzzy. So now we're going to pin them in place. I'm just gonna move our little green dude off to the side. So <laughs> he's so fuzzy guys. All right, so I'm gonna start by working out where I want the heart to sit, which I think will be just level and center with his face. So from there, you wanna give the four limbs the impression that they are holding onto the heart. So starting on one side, see I'm pinning that shoulder level with the side of the face so that the little paw just crosses over on top of the heart. And we're gonna mirror that on the other side with the other arm. And as per usual, make sure that you're really happy because it's super easy to pin and unpin pieces, but it's really hard to unstitch something if you sew it down somewhere and then you decide you're not happy with it. So take as long as you need during this part of the process. So there we go, I like the positioning of those. And now we've just got our legs. So. So you can see I'm putting, attaching the non-fuzzy side, fuzzy side, non-fuzzy side, and they should be right next to your arms. Again, just with the tips of the claws crossing over onto the heart and the same on the other side. So I really like the positioning of all of those. And so now I'm just going to take some, a needle and thread. I'm going to sew them all on. So I'm going to start by sewing down each of the shoulders and then I'll be stitching each of the hands onto the heart. The heart itself will only be secured onto the little claws. It will not be secured to the body as well. So we'll be sewing down the arms and then the hands to the heart. And there we go. So that is our finished little sloth. I said, I used little again. So that is our finished sloth. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below to let me know if you like prefer him with the claws or without. So a written version of this pattern will be available in my Etsy store and will also be sent out to my patrons. Um, I will leave links to both below in the description. Yeah, if you wanna see more patterns like this, please like and subscribe. Uh, next week, I'm gonna be doing a design challenge, so it's not a pattern. If any of you have seen any of my original videos, uh, what I do is I take an idea that I'm really interested in and I just see how far I can push it. And I've got a really exciting one planned for next week. So hit the subscribe button so you, that you don't miss out on that because I think it's going to be really cool. I haven't tried it yet, but I, I think it's going to be really cool. That's half the fun of those videos. But otherwise, that's it for today. Okay, bye. Ah, uh, yes, I love you to the tips of my nubs. I'm actually frozen by how awkward that sentence was. Um... <laughs>